Hi, I'm Steve Abaddon, and I am standing here literally in the middle of Dry Creek, uh, just to the west of Sedona, Arizona. And I am here today to talk about phages. And in fact, what I'm going to be doing is talking about this book here. So this is called Thinking Like a Phage, the geniuses of the viruses, or the genius of the viruses that infect bacteria and archaea by Mary Yule, uh, illustrated, or illustrations by Leah Pantia. And what I want to do is use this book as inspiration uh, to talk about phages. I've been studying phages for, well, I guess well over 30 years at this point. And, well, I mean, not well over, over 30 years at this point. And um, I've been uh, publishing on them and trying to think about their ecology. I've got a, a PhD supposedly in molecular genetics, so in theory I know a bit about these guys. And what I want to do is use this book as inspiration. I'm not so much going to be reading from it uh, as looking at it, seeing what Mary has to say, and then uh, kind of uh, riffing on that. Uh, she has some quotes at the beginning, however, they am going to read. The first two are, uh, it has been well said that a virus is a piece of bad news wrapped up in, in protein. Uh, and that's uh, Medawar and Medawar, uh, 1985. And then the second one is by Andre Loaf. Uh, whether or not viruses should be regarded as organisms is a matter of taste. So what I want to do is start out by giving you a, a sense of what a phage is, uh, and also what an archaeal virus is. So these are both things that uh, Mary uh, is talking about in this book. And I'm going to talk about that in a larger context, and that is uh, from the context of what is known as viruses of microorganisms. I've got a paper that came out in 2012 that reviews the concept of viruses of microorganisms. Uh, and in fact, in theory, I've got a book coming out either this year, uh, 2017, or next, 2018, uh, that also will be on viruses of microorganisms. So what's a virus of, micro, of a microorganism? So part of the problem with uh, that phrase is that we have to define then what a microorganism is, and that's not necessarily easy. Suffice it to say that microorganisms are small things. Uh, they include basically all bacteria. Uh, they include, now people aren't gonna like me saying this, but bacteria-like things known as archaea, uh, which are also small. Uh, both the bacteria and the archaea are prokaryotic organisms. They lack nuclei, cellular nuclei. Uh, and then there are also a diversity of eukaryotes, the organisms with nuclei that in fact are small, uh, very small. We're talking about things that are really less than a millimeter wide uh, and, and usually much less than a millimeter wide uh, as a whole adult organism cells. Uh, and the eukaryotes, actually, their greatest diversity is found among the microorganisms. We're just used to the plants and the animals and the fungi and various other things that are big as being our examples of eukaryotes. But there are lots of microscopic protozoa. There are microscopic fungi. Uh, the yeasts is a good example of that. Uh, so there are lots of eukaryotes that are also microscopic and therefore microorganisms and therefore which have viruses. Uh, therefore, viruses and microorganisms. So the concentration here is going to be on the two things that are unambiguously microorganisms. Uh, these are cellular microorganisms. These are the archaea and the bacteria and the viruses of these things. So then we can go on and we can say, well, what, pray tell, is a virus? And uh, the standard definition of a virus is some kind of nucleic acid. This would be RNA or DNA. Uh, this would be nucleic acid that, in fact, is uh, has encodes uh, multiple genes, uh, and also it is encased in some way uh, in some kind of protein coat, something we call a capsid. Some viruses are also encased in lipids, something we call an envelope, and thus you would have an envelope and then a protein coat, and then you would have the nucleic acid going from the outside in. Uh, but there are a diversity of things that aren't quite like that. Uh, there are viruses that, in fact, uh, are encased in lipids, but not in proteins. You see fungal viruses like that. You have viruses that are encased in proteins that have lipids associated with those proteins, uh, not necessarily an envelope. Uh, and you also have viruses, usually most viruses leave cells and then find new cells to infect. 
Usually you have vi viruses that, uh, that do that, but uh, in, in some cases there are viruses, particularly fungal viruses, that seem to not leave their cells, but instead to somehow move from cell to cell without really ever truly exiting the cells that they're in. I don't truly understand, fully understand exactly how that works, but the important point is, is that there are a diversity of things out there that we call viruses. They're not cells. Uh, they tend to be smaller than cells, although, although there's exceptions to that. Uh, they don't have ribosomes that they carry around. Uh, they usually don't have the uh, materials, the proteins that they need, the enzymes that they need in order to replicate their uh, nucleic acids, but there are exceptions to that as well. But they're small things, they're nucleic acids, uh, they tend to be uh, encased in protein, they tend to move between cells, the ones that make the viruses, the uh, virus making machines, factories, uh, to found new cells to infect. Uh, and also uh, they can be described uh, as either viruses of microorganisms or viruses of big things like our cells, with the concentration here being on microorganisms, those are microorganisms. So the two categories that I'm going to concentrate on, in fact one of them I'll be particularly concentrating on, are what are known as bacteriophages on the one hand and archaeal viruses on the other hand. The bacteriophages, phages for short, are in fact bacterial viruses. They are the viruses that infect bacteria. So you have bacteria, which are cellular organisms, and the bacteria have viruses that actually grab onto them, inject their nucleic acid into the cytoplasm of these uh, bacteria, uh, and then make viruses inside the bacteria, release those viruses, which they go on to find new bacteria to infect, and thereby the cycle continues. These viruses of bacteria we call bacteriophages. Now, we can use these viruses that infect bacteria as antibacterial agents. That's a slightly different and more complicated story than just talking about bacteriophages themselves. Uh, something called phage therapy, in fact, something that I'm involved in as well. Uh, but for now, we have bacteriophages, which are bacterial viruses. We have archaeal viruses, which are the viruses of members of domain archaea. Both of these are viruses of microorganisms, and we can contrast them with viruses of eukaryotes, uh, which include both viruses of microorganisms and viruses of big things such as plants, animals, and uh, fungi. Okay, that's, I think, good enough for today. Have a great one.